Welcome to the Progressive American. I know it's been a while. I've been uh, working on some video essay projects, uh, particularly a response to Kevin Ferris. But today I have Philoso Shai here with me. And today we're going to be discussing some of the unusual uh, things that Jordan Peterson has really uh, done and has continued to do both online and in his uh, commentary in general. So Philoso wow. Shai, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having us back again. It's it's great. This is a long time coming and it's been oh, interesting yeah. to... It's been interesting to see that Jordan Peterson has actually been getting worse at an accelerated yes. rate, like every day worse than he was worse the previous day yeah. um, for the last like couple months. So, so we've uh, we've got a lot of content now, as we recall, you know. Oh my god! Higher, yeah, I, like you were, uh, I was. I remember just going through my Discord, and I'm like, oh lord, he sent me more stuff <laughs> because well, every, Peterson, day, every, like day. every day, it's like every day. Because the thing about that I, I kind of want to emphasize in this conversation, and we'll probably get to it, is that Jordan Peterson has always been kind of unhinged. Um, he's always been a crazy person. He's always been uh, very like inclined to take the most extreme positions for his analysis. Um, you know, there's so, a whole... So we actually, we, we would like to slightly disagree with it. And this, this is part of the episode that we actually wanted to bring yeah. up is... is so once upon a time when we were younger and a little bit more uh uh you know impressionable or whatever we and before we understood the jargon and the lingo uh, we thought that jordan peterson was highly well educated and intelligent and we he is highly educated and he's quite intelligent but but most as we now know most of his jargon most of his lingo is quite meaningless it's it's yes. very much a word salad but but even that requires a degree of education to make that believable um and 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 he, he used to be able to keep that really good. And then he went off to Russia for an illegal procedure to be put into an, a medically induced coma for like an entire month or whatever, which was considered an extremely dangerous procedure already that was not allowed in America. And that's why he went to Russia to get it. And we're not saying like, oh, Jordan Peterson's been, you know, brainwashed by the Russians or whatever. We're saying we think that non-FDA approved procedure that he did to cheat his way out of his own benzo addiction, despite the fact that he has made his entire career off of self-help books that demand that you take responsibility for your own addictions and do it the hard way. Uh, we think that illegal procedure uh, damaged him deeply, and ever since then, we have noticed a marked increase in his unhingedness. Oh yeah, um, and I, I, he was always a bigot, but yes, he that's, wasn't that's what I was trying to unhinged say. like he is now. Yeah, and and I want to be clear. I'm not saying that like there isn't a decline in in his approach and his in his his conduct. Um, he, that's very clear. Just like we we were, we said this off air. Uh, uh, earlier was like it's gonna be like every day something crazy he's going to oh, yeah. do um like for example one of the things i have in my doc here uh is this this weird need to mock concern for the public health in any capacity so whether it's climate change whether it's uh concerns about food w uh, women's rights even michaela chastised rights. Him, michaela chastised him like recently about about oh, yeah. a, a statement that he made that was so sexist, even she couldn't like. What was the one that? What was that one? Uh, it was some um, some woman who was super anti rights or something like that, and 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 we don't specifically remember. We'd have to look at it. It, it just all blends into the back, into the background, uh, which we suppose is a good way of of segueing into that. This is probably just the first of many um because as you said we said before uh we even started this is it is highly likely uh incredibly likely as a matter of fact that he will say something truly disgusting during the duration of this interview also the the statement it, it was h pearl davis 
H. Pearl yeah, Davis we were talking about earlier. Outside of H. Pearl Davis said outside of reproduction, society would, would function fine without women. And Jordan B. Peterson responded, but who would keep the decorative pillow manufacturers in business? And Michaela Peterson responded, her own daughter his own daughter, your business would definitely take a hit, Dad. This is a resentful woman who hates other women. Tell them that tells them that they're useless after 35 and continues to propagate red pill lies. Just because the left is crazy doesn't mean people like this aren't. Uh, so, so we we can see a little infighting there uh, on yes. their sides, but but also we can see where where even he's been starting to get so socially unacceptable that that even his own daughter is telling him like you've got to calm the hell down here. So yeah, and and, and I, to also kind of <laughs> to address uh, one of the, one of the commenters, excuse me, I have a bit of a cough. Uh, one of the things that I think kind of is uh addressed in like the way he talks is basically an attempt to attack liberalism and he he's he, because he sees it as this growing evil it, you kind of hear this with his like phrase that like postmodern neo-marxists are taking over uh academia and they're they're really totalitarian which is just a rehash of the cultural bolshevism uh nazi shtick um so i think part part of the thing uh to like really look at jordan peterson is that you need to be able to frame his rhetoric as an, an attack based in nothing. If you especially to... considering that he's acknowledged multiple times that he does not know what communism is, that he has never read any of Marx's works, that he has never read any uh, of, of of any of the primary communist doctrines or anything like that. So he's actually attacking nothing. He's attacking the straw man based off of his his ignorance. Yes, and and, and the kind of segue into. Um, one of the examples, I'm not sure if share screen will work, so I'm just not going to do it right now. Uh, but there was a post where the Toronto Star was talking about uh, the need for Canada to address um, heat, death, heat deaths caused by climate change and wildfires. And yeah. Jordan Pearson proceeded to post, and you know this, uh, a, a, a picture of the Joker and him going crazy and saying... Because he's obsessed with the Joker. Yeah, he's yeah. obsessed with the Joker. I don't know what what the deal is with that. We, we don't um, know what the clown obsession is. Yeah, that's uh that's, that's a nice weird thing. one. Yeah, and he only started it kind of recently too. So it's a it's a bit of an unnerving thing. Um, yeah. and he basically said because fire deaths are or heat deaths are such a big concern, and statistically, like they're not as bad as say in the United States or in Mexico. But the fact of the matter is that his approach in just posting that or talking about it like that is to me an attempt to get his audience um to not look forward his it, it, maybe i'm wrong on this it, but it's it also me... an appeal to science denial it's an appeal yeah. to science and reality denial uh we went uh, about 10 years ago we went up to alaska to do landscaping for a summer and a lot of people we, jordan peterson should know this he's a canadian uh, but a lot of people aren't really aware but the sun does not go down during the summer in Alaska. It just doesn't go down. So you will, you know, the sun will be pounding on you and it'll only be 70 degrees, but it'll feel 120 degrees because the sun is so direct and it, you will pass out. Like, and, and this is up in, this is up in Fairbanks and Anchorage, you know, like yeah. this, this is way above where these, the predominant amount of these heat deaths are. So once again, it, it really is just a, an appeal to emotional, reality denial and science denial the fact of the matter is the more northerly or southerly your climb is you know southerly below the equator your climb is the more extreme your swings are canada is not a blasted wasteland of snow and ice at least four to five months of the year at yeah. which point it is as a matter of fact a verdant constantly sunny brilliant bright wasteland or a, a bloom land that you will pass out if you spend four or five hours in the sun which you will do without noticing because the sun doesn't work right so your body can't send you the right signals to go rehydrate or get inside or go to sleep and that's how it was in alaska during the summer yeah, and, and and I think the the thing there for me is uh, it comes in the in like the Trudeau government attempting to establish to the public like, hey, this is a concern. We know people have been hurt by this. So here's what we're going to do in terms of like a policy prescription in the long term. We have to think in the long term. 
And I think part of the problem with not only Jordan Peterson being uh, incredibly um, unhinged is partly because of his worldview, that he thinks that the world ha- has to, is either cha- order or chaos, and that's it. Uh, like, this is why he starts... Uh, this is why he described Hitler as being motivated by the mark of Cain, uh, which I wrote about as being uh, an incredibly um, disastrous approach to historical methods. And uh, Three Arrows did a really good video responding to him. Um, yeah. But I think this worldview is particularly uh, frustrating and because it is appealing. Like uh, Raphael in the comment section just said, we we do have an element of this that is appealing because it allows people to ground themselves in something that they think is substantive, but is not. Um, and, I, and there's also a degree in, in competitive authoritarian philosophy, which uh, Jordan Peterson is very clearly a fan of, uh, despite despite his statements against the, you know, against it, uh, you know, to the contrary. Um, he's he's creating something, and this, this applies to what Raphael is saying, describe why he has a considerable sway and influence over impressionable young men, uh, well, these impressionable young men, you know, have less experience than him. So, you know, he automatically has an imbalance of power there. And he is a psychologist. So, again, he he understands how these impressionable young men uh, think. And their lack of uh, functional comparative experience allows him to manipulate them and make them think that it's their idea. And he does that in a typical competitive authoritarian fashion of giving them physical things of giving them people to hate and things to do and ways to clean their room and things that are simple and physical and and seemingly applicable to the young men out there that feel like the rest of the world is all a world of you know intangibles he's the one who's trying to style himself in the physical compete physically become the strongest lobster and that yeah. appeals that appeals to less experienced, less educated individuals who who want to uh, proverbially and literally, as it were, take life into their own hands. Yeah, and and like the whole clean your room thing, like that to me in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Like if he had just wrote like a Twelve Rules for Life and left it at that, I think it wouldn't be as harmful. But he had to go. He had to do this weird. Uh, thing to see as if this the, the this book and the ideas behind it can cover everything and and the truth is humans have been trying for a very long time to understand everything and we probably never will and i, I, I maybe it's well, that's just, no excuse not to try <laughs> oh right right but it also but when you're like creating a philosophy or a worldview for yourself it does there it has to be some element of skepticism of your own abilities and thought processes to improve though to improve uh, that to improve yourself and to change your worldview um, right. I, there I was in this uh, Marxist philosophy course uh, last semester and I really really liked it because it a gave me an understanding of why a I'm not a Marxist but B, why it is still interesting to look at uh, Marxist philosophy and how other people abuse it. Um, But one of the things the professor uh, taught us was this concept of looting ideas. You don't necessarily have to subscribe to the entirety of an ideology, but you can look at what they're saying in like, on say like alienation uh, of labor. You can look at that and then apply that to another philosophy and create an entirely new way of thinking. I don't really think Jordan Peterson is capable of that or no, he's unwilling to do not. Well, because and, and now we had a, an interview with luciano uh gonzalez vegas uh, a while ago uh and uh, we were talking about the nature of conservatism and and how the definition the political definition of conservatism is the political ideology to resist change and progress in mm-hmm. preference of older more traditional ideals uh you know and and in in preference of maintaining the status quo and the special rights and privileges to the already previously uh privileged classes the upper classes the 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 aristocrats uh and and this is this is entirely standard and universal all the way back to the french revolution wherein the the terms of of conservatism and liberalism were kind of coined as we think of them today yeah Uh, and and so so jordan peterson uh will will maybe talk later or, or it's certainly in a different episode perhaps about how Jordan Peterson certainly appears to be an aspiring cult leader, but 
more importantly is he's just he's obviously a far-right conservative he obviously does not want these things to change he already experiences so many rights and privileges so uh you know if 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 everybody else gets it he feels like that's diminishing his special status um, and, and, and to kind of go back to like what we were mentioning earlier about his appeal to young people uh, his, or, or young uh, disaffected men, I do think to some extent that uh, that desire to conserve, to fear change is part of the reason why he, go, he lends himself to disaffected young men because the, if those people ever like came to terms with themselves on their own without you know, Jordan Peterson manipulating what they're talking about, uh, he what they're, what they're to, yeah, he wouldn't have anything anymore. He w- well, he wouldn't have anything anymore, and I think he wouldn't be able to cr- uh, halt what he sees as the generation causing the change, creating the change. Because young people, generally speaking, tend to be more progressive. They tend to be open to newer things. And uh, that, I think, is part of the reason why Jordan Peterson's message is so targeted. Uh, he, it is easier to try and, like, find the group within that group that is like small, unwilling to change um, and just get them to like try and push back on change. Um, uh, so and Raphael's then... got a, Raphael's got a good thingy here. If you hadn't seen it, uh, as yeah, as I... you think would expose fundamental logical inconsistency in Jordan Peterson's philosophies. Um, we think, we're, we're not exactly sure about questions because we're really horrible about asking questions. Instead, we like to point out facts. And the fact of the matter is that Jordan Peterson has a long history of hypocrisy, bigotry, and violence. Uh, and and the logical inconsistencies of his philosophy are all of the logical con- inconsistencies that have to do with bigotry, namely and almost exclusively at the top being that they are simply untrue. That, that yeah. the things that Jordan Peterson says with the conviction that he says them and the absolute narrative that he tries to spin are statistically factually incorrect. You can go to Google, you can do a five minute Google search and find countless pieces of scholarly articles and various different uh, pieces of evidence and, and research experimentation that all disprove basically everything that Jordan Peterson has ever published. And yeah. he himself, uh, you said 12, reason, uh, 12, 12 Rules for Life or whatever, even that book is full of, uh, it, it, by and large, mostly discredited statements about self-improvement, about the nature of consciousness, about assertion and sociability, yeah. etc. Uh, so, so we think the biggest thing that would expose the fundamental logical consistencies in Jordan Peterson's philosophies are simply that they are factually incorrect. They are, he is, he is, if he is not lying to you, he is at least telling you a not true. Yeah. And, and to kind of go off of that, I, I do think that's part of the reason why when uh, Nathan Robinson uh, uh, posted an uh, article in Current Affairs where he was talking about um, a Jordan Peterson fan or former Jordan Peterson fan who has now rejected him uh, and, right. and interviewed that, interviewed that uh, person, Jordan Peterson responded basically saying, you, to uh robinson that saying you basically don't matter to me i'm totally not mad like that was kind of the approach he took on his tweets and i think the part of the reason he responds like that is because he knows at least uh, partially uh through the way people take him down um that his philosophy is fundamentally flawed and full of nothingness and just empty-headed um and he also can't respond to those kind of things that's part of the cult leader competitive authoritarianism kind of bent of his is you don't respond with anything well like you never mattered you're just bullshit uh i need to now eject you publicly and verbally so that all of my followers can know that you're one of them right and and i think that kind of goes into um a lot of this like and perhaps the on the uh online sphere incentivizes this a lot more than we i've previously thought it has um because i've seen people who for all intents and purposes say really empty stuff like they like we were talking about pearly things where she's talking about you know all the most horrible heinous things about women that are based on nothing there is no evidence whatsoever um and yet she has seen a massive rise she has over a million subscribers 
and it's the, it's similar with Jordan Peterson. He is huge. He has a strong following. Uh, and, and they and they use specialized language designed to fool people who aren't as apt in in the physical language or in the yep. psychological sphere, especially. Yeah, one hundred percent. And and to go to the question of like him being like a cult leader, I'm wondering if you could kind of uh, elaborate a little more on that because a lot of times when people like say, "Oh, this person's acting like a cult leader," that people will inevitably like kind of hesitate to accept that. So I was wondering if you could kind of go into it because I'm pretty sure that like it's an apt description. Well, so first and foremost, uh, we are not using the colloquial term of cult leader. We actually have multiple series on multiple channels about the anatomy of cults, about how cults get their uh, members, how they brainwash and program their members, how they keep their members, and how they make themselves appear suitable and socially acceptable to the outside world in much the same way as, you know, the Mormon church and the Scientologists have tried and largely failed to do over the course of the years because of their particular natures of extremism. Um, so, so when we say that we believe that Jordan Peterson is an aspiring cult leader, we did not come to that conclusion uh, the decision to say that lightly, we actually resisted saying that he was a cult leader for about five years now. Uh, and and then recently, only very recently, within the past like six to eight months or what have you, would we say that he is spiraling into the aspiring cult leader field. Largely our reasoning for that is his, uh, there are a few of them, but and these are in no particular order, his uh, continued and rising involvement in actual religious uh, politics. Uh, he has many. He has many uh, videos now directly addressing, you know, the Catholic Church, Muslims, etc. Uh, he's also. Uh, what words do you think? Do you think are buzzwords that Peterson? Oh man, we'll get to that one soon. He's he has so much specialized language, and that too is part of becoming a cult leader is the use and development of specialized language of propaganda of the othering of people so he uh, you know as mentioned before you know somebody used to be a petersonian and then stopped being a petersonian and his response was like well i don't need you anymore fuck you you know you're not important everybody yeah. in my following now knows that you're one of the enemy you were never a peterson supporter to begin with you know and and you would never will be it was like that um, old Jilly Juice and, thing, too. And and there is a stunning, a, a, a hilarious amount of thought control that comes out of his mouth. There's there's a, a, a comical amount of uh, videos where he's actually telling people how to think. That you, you, you should not think this way. You should think as I say. You should, you know, view yourself as such. You should have an alpha personality, and so on and so forth. You know, always make sure to wear fresh clothes and so on. That's also behavior control. Uh, long story short, especially over the last six to eight months, year-ish about, he has been involving more and more classical aspects of cult conditioning and the bite model and other behavioral theories that revolve around cults and have for, at this point, centuries, actually. Uh, so so we, when we say he's an aspiring cult leader, we, we absolutely mean it's because he's using all of the cult jargon and that includes uh, buzzwords like you know wo uh, moralists and neo-marxists and things like that uh, which we established much earlier in the interview you know neo-marxist well he's never read any by his own admission he's never read any marxist literature because he believes it's evil and it's useless and so on so he doesn't actually know what a neo-marxist is and that's what that's what makes it a buzzword um yeah, and, and I will say, like, part of the issue for me is also, like, his red baiting. Uh, his approach to, like, pan everything as a Marxist threat, uh, I think that plays very much into the whole uh, cult leader mentality because it portrays society at large as inherently threatening, as inherently evil, um, and, like, special, don't trust these others. Special languages that marks the other, that easily and capably yep. labels the other as some extreme fundamentalist uh, uh, faction. And, and this also, this isn't just competitive authoritarianism, it's also fascist uh, totalitarianism. Mm -hmm. uh, but both of them, as we think we said it in our previous interview with you, that they follow the same path and they take a quick turn at the end away from each other. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they have very much the same anatomy. And in this case, 
Uh, you may or may not have noticed, but every single fascist nation and ideology in history ever since the founding of Mussolini's fascism has had a main focus on stamping out communism. Yes. Communism is their boogeyman that they use to rally the people around, and we see the exact same kind of rhetoric, the exact same kind of you know bigoted rhetoric and and cultural ideological rhetoric from Jordan Peterson. Yeah, and and just to kind of give off like to go into like the current affairs article, um, one of the things that the person who was like interviewed said was basically of uh, this quote because if he's a genius then why look into anything he says he must be correct unquote that that i think is the is critical here his use of buzzwords and his approach towards uh like everything being threatening is twofold he wants you not to believe that he's incredibly intelligent and knows everything and can give you all the answers which he can't uh, Wait, and, but that's also part of the cult mechanism. Yes, you need, and then, all of the information must come from the leader. Yes, and 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 he has this other whether it's postmodern neo Marxists, the moralists, whatever term he wants to use, and he also never uh, addresses um, really what uh, you know what his opponents are actually saying. This is why he got blown out by Zizek in that debate. Yeah. Because um, he, because he doesn't actually have anything of substance to respond with, yeah. Yeah, and and to go, and I think one of the things he does to identify this idea of the in group or the us uh, is this phrase, that Western civilization phrase that has yeah, been so yeah. thoroughly abused yeah. uh, to the point where it's it doesn't really reflect reality. Uh, it never had, it never really did. It was a vast oversimplification. Um, and he uses those oversimplifications in a way that he can control. And the and fact he that also the... he also calls on the normality of his own fan base. He yes. doesn't. Th that's one of the benefits of being a cult leader. You don't call your own people a buzzword. You yes. guys are normal. You're the normal ones. Everybody else is is wrong. We the us. That's just normal people. You know, those are just. Those are just believers or, you know, we believe recently he actually called them Petersonians on Twitter. And that's why we're calling them. Oh, jeez. And, and so, yeah, so we believe by his words, the term as of the interview is Petersonians. We, we, he put that on a, a Twitter. <laughs> and and that's, that's dangerous because that's changing your identity, maybe even changing your name, which is another part of behavior control, you know, and so we, we'll see. You know, even calling yourself brother or sister or what have you is is a change of identity in some way. It's not it's not super intense, but he is naming his fandom now. So that's yeah. that's concerning. And and also I just I think one of the things that is particularly frustrating for me is the environment of our media apparatus is just frankly broken. And that's why oh, yeah. someone like him can spread. Like we've seen I've written about this before, but the destruction of local media and an increasingly sensationalized and weakened national media uh, makes it so that people who can like make frustrated people uh, feel like they have meaning can come in and basically say whatever they want without uh, serious criticism. Or in the case of some mainstream news outlets like the New York Times, they make a false equivalency between his position and that of the people who are correcting him. Um, and I'm curious, what do you think can be done to kind of address that? Because it seems to me he still kind of gets away with it, and a lot of conservative media also does this. Well, first and foremost, we, we just need to know that as far as the media, quote unquote, goes, you know, Fox News versus CNN versus, versus MSNBC and so on and so forth, uh, we've written a couple articles in the last couple of years about it, but at the end of the day, they really don't care what who wins on the left or right. Uh, Fox News uh, specifically has been caught time and time again lying and even leaked documents from within their own offices have been, have shown that they don't, they, they know that they're lying and they don't care that they're lying and that they would rather mislead the American people for the sake of money, for the sake of, you know, being viral, getting ratings, etc. Uh, no matter what happens, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, etc., they're all going to skim by. So the we honestly believe the best thing is to continue to move forward with technology, to do what we're doing now. We're smaller creators who are more interested in the facts because that's all they can give, uh, uh, throw 
you know, statistics up. And, and we feel like, you know, a, a, as mentioned before, a huge part of Jordan Peterson's movement is the denial of science, the denial of statistics, the denial of reality, because it's all about what the leader says and so on. Uh, we believe, and, and you know, that's of course why he did so much COVID denial and, and stuff like that. Uh, but, but we believe that the best thing you can do to inoculate against bigotry and ignorance is education. Education and cosmopolitanism. Meet more people of different demographics as often as possible and learn everything about them because as mentioned before you know we don't really like to ask questions you know why would peterson do that because that will leave the petersonian able to respond with a completely fallacious comment that we may or may not have something to no we would say well given peterson's history he would do that given that he has done this many many times before you, you uh oh one moment what is the effective technique he used to create these difference between what we believe and who is uh what explains his audience's tolerance for a denial of science etc well that's just that's just cult mentality and any in general uh uh because being part of a cult involves information and thought control peterson can just tell his people they're lying to you and then make up a huge you know five minute youtube video about how they're lying to all of which is a complete fabrication of course you know because he doesn't know anything about his ideological opponents and then that's that is how he he builds he programs his audience to deny statistics and science and so on because that could all be a neo-marxist trap uh yeah, we're, and we're recalling in shishin lu's um and she shouldn't lose a, a three body problem the you know it's this amazing science fiction novel setting uh, but the first couple of chapters are literally just political dissidents and stuff like that with a uh, huge overwhelming political they call them struggle sessions where the scientists are being paraded up in front of millions of people and then viciously questioned and anytime they respond with something scientific their questioners and accusers just go and say that's a reactionary capitalist so on and so forth and everybody eats it right up because that's the that's the that's the wording that's the programming when when we say that isn't true because that's a reactionary scientific so on and so forth that's the trigger word that makes everybody get really really angry and then they stop thinking about what's actually going on and again right back to cults uh which is is thought control uh maintain trigger words and special thought stopping language that you can use at any given point in time yeah and, 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 and in and, cults the cultists will actually do this to themselves yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i just want to kind of say like this is also really kind of true with other conservative commentators i've seen uh, like they'll, right. like they'll they'll play things they'll say things like oh that's just some marxist crap or yeah. that's some marxist nonsense and it's it's like there is a co like obviously there are problems with marxist philosophy i i particularly am not a fan of his uh, of his idea of a dictator di a dictatorship of the proletariat um but well and we I just don't also... think we just don't personally think that uh, a, a 150 years dead failed economist has any place in the modern day society's economy <laughs> so you know that's we've never read anything that he's done but we have read a lot of history about the man personally and we know he was stuck in his house for six months once because he was so poor his wife had to sell his own pants so, yeah, so, so like, know, like clearly he wasn't good at the economy then why would he be better at a considerably more advanced and complex economy which we run now <laughs> yeah and also i did but i would also say that like one of the things i've noticed is uh, going back to that that philosophy professor I had, he started off with saying by saying things like, anybody who says Marx was wrong or right about everything is either an ideologue or an idiot. People exist in their context; they, 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 their arguments are presented as um, as like people with particular points based in the world that they live in. And if you want to say their X group of people is right or wrong, it's best to kind of look at like what exactly they are saying, why they're saying it, and what context they're saying that. And a lot of times when we see like conservative commentators like Peterson, they seem to uh, gravitate towards the label of Marxist, but mm -hmm. never actually question the context in which Marxist thought has evolved over time or even and, where it goes. 
and and to further that idea before we get to Raphael's uh, a good question here um we, we would like to we would like to continue that is you know anybody who hears what we're saying and says oh that's just what a libtard neo-marxist woke moralist would say you know there is so little substance to that that you know if they don't understand that if, if those people saying that can't foresee us turning right back around and say well that's what a right wing you know reactionary not neo nazi would say if you can't see that kind of response coming from the people that you perceive as the left you should invest some money into chess classes because you need to start thinking ahead um, because because that's how little substance it actually has. Anybody can just snap back and forth with, a, oh, you're just a Marxist, well, you're just a Nazi. But in actuality, if we're going to make any goods, we, we need to, uh, like what you called, you know, picking and choosing out of the various different political philosophies. And that's what we as, a, you know, a, a gradualist moderate try to aim for. You know, let's, let's, let's go, you know, with things that work and then leave much anything else behind <laughs> yeah and and pragmatism like is a is a really important approach because if you get like caught up um in in one ideology or another or the belief systems uh proposed by one philosopher over another you're gonna end up having situations where people become like obsessed with that philosophy they treat it like the gospel um when you know a lot of that even with the gospel there are problems uh like it's it's one of those things where like People need to be more critical of themselves, and I really wish like more people would have this approach that, hey, I have limitations. Let's see where I'm missing things, and that's one of the reasons I took that Marxist philosophy course was because I was getting in a fight with Marxists, and I wanted to make sure I was not mis um, misrepresenting what they were saying, so I, I read it. <laughs> I went and, back and the I greatest, back. The greatest thing anybody can do to maintain their own education and uh, moral and intellectual honesty and integrity is to change their mind. The greatest yeah. thing you can do is change your mind. Uh, and and on that note, let's go back to Raphael because uh, he's talking about helping people change their mind or changing people's minds. Uh, do you two have any ideas or tactics to help Petersonians who begin to question Peterson's ideology to help them leave this cult-like situation? Um... I can actually hit on that for a second. Yeah, but, please, okay. please do, because we don't really have a wording. Like we have an answer, but we don't have a wording yet. So well, firstly, ahead. so I and I think it goes back to what was mentioned earlier about cosmopolitanism. A lot of times, people need to connect with the group, the groups of people that they're supposed to be like hating in in Peterson's uh, framework. So, like if you, I remember in college, one of the things I like had uh, to do was uh you know talk with people who had completely different understandings of what the media was uh what pol uh, what political philosophy was and i ended up having a roommate that uh, i may have mentioned a couple times on my twitter his name's darby and he's a friend of mine now but he's a he was a conservative and he's still a conservative but when we had to like room together we were able to have conversations and i'd explain hey this is x y and z why somebody like me would think this way and I don't think it's a fair representation of my argument or my position for you to say this or 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 X person. Uh, and it re he did actually uh, really listen to me, and it was really nice to have those conversations. So I think if you can get people to like actually talk to them in person or talk with them and disagree, uh, you can get them to kind of acknowledge that hey, that other that we have been told uh, is so evil. Um, we can actually have a civilized conversation. We can have humanity between each other and i think once people get to that point they start to realize that hey maybe this person i've been like listening to uh like jordan peterson might be a liar or misrepresenting or some things or just doesn't understand what he's doing um but i think he's more like along the lines of a cult leader so as for our side we think it's it, so it's twofold first of all is the dishonest route um uh, so so we and, and we want to say this because in, in proper Machiavellian fashion, like, we cannot always aim high. If we aim high and they aim low, they'll still be hitting us in the nuts all day. Uh, so we can't just stand around and let that happen because it will inherently damage our side, physically or intellectually. So so the dishonest approach is, uh, this is this is acknowledging that this is a Petersonian who is more st stuck in their ways, who is who is uh, mostly on Peterson's side, uh, the best thing you can do is to get to the people around them. 
the best thing you can do is to get to the people that they hang out with who themselves are considered friends, might not be considered the in-group, but are considered in enough that they can go, hey man, you're being a right jackass about X or Y. Uh, and, and sometimes it really does just take, like, your friend suddenly, like, snapping at you and being like, bro, that was fucked up. Why would you do that? Uh, yeah. So, so that's that's what we kind of think of as like the deceptive way. Reach if you want a Petersonian who's really stuck in their ways, but you you don't think is lost to to see the light, as it were. Uh, have their friends appeal to them, appeal to their friends, appeal to their family, and so on and so forth. And if they have a good relation with those people, if those people are their friends and family, they will probably snap out of it. A much more preferable way is is the more honest way about it and that is uh, this is interestingly enough this is this is what we take with a lot of of people who would by and large be considered very bigoted including but not limited to like our neighbor um who's like everything phobic uh spend time with them eventually they will become friends with you for the person that you are and then you can ask them the very real question do you think i'm like that and that will make them very uncomfortable very fast. And you will find they will almost immediately go to the, no, no, but you're cool. You're one of the good yep. ones. Yep. And from there, you can, you can say, okay, so do you realize that, you know, now you've created a bad demographic and, and we're the standout, but I'm not, you know, I one of the good ones and actually not special i am quite the average for my demographic this is what you more often see so clearly i am not one of the good ones i am one of the average would you like to acknowledge that you know or alternatively you can come out with me into my area now now that you've known me now that you've known i'm not dangerous because a lot of these people you know that's what we see with uh peterson and and his hatred of the gsrm he consistently calls them uh, mutilators, groomers, pedophiles, rapists, so on and so forth. And the reason for this is to make sure that his people do not give us the chance. They do not. They do not go out. They don't find anything out. Those people are scary, horrible, inhuman monsters. But once they actually find out that we are not scary and human monsters, that means that means Jordan Peterson was wrong, categorically. Yes. Beyond, beyond, beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond reasonable doubt, Peterson was wrong about one thing, and and the cult leader, and we say cult, it feels like it's religious, but we mean political, religious, ideological, etc. There are even literal diet cults out there, so it's it you know don't think about it as a purely religious thing. Any cult leader is constantly trying to keep their hand on the information control because if they're wrong about one thing, they're not divine. Yes. They're not God if they're wrong about even one thing. And the moment that even one thing is wrong, the house of cards comes falling down. Before you know it, without personal self-deception, that one thing that Peterson was wrong about becomes two things that Peterson was wrong about, which becomes four things that Peterson was wrong about. And then you are calling, before you know it, you're calling Jordan Peterson out on literally everything he said is bullshit. Yeah, and, and, I, and I would just like to also add that, like, one of the things that I think people need to remember is a lot of, like, cult-like figures, they try to convince people that, of the danger. There's an element of fear here. And I think that's partially the reason Jordan Peterson himself is becoming more and more unhinged. And you mentioned this uh, before we got on air, was this idea that, like, Jordan Peterson has become increasingly violent. And I think part of the issue... He has been calling for trying to incite and specifically threatening violence more and more every day yeah and he's and he's referred to like uh basically people who provide like uh trans affirming care as and he posted something to the effect of jail is too good for you well they, what, what is good explicitly for he also explicitly said at one point alongside that we think before that that they should be flogged in town square Jeez. Um, so, yeah, no. So, so it's bad. It's really, really bad. He's actually growing, and we do believe that that call for violence, that increasingly unhingedness, is part of this illegal procedure. You know, that damaged his brain because before he was he was at least better put together. Yes. <laughs> you know, and now he's not. Well, and and I think that's partially because, um, not just because of some medical issues, and I 
don't have any evidence to go into that because a i don't have his medical records and that would be weird but b i also we are, we are of course only making assertions that we absolutely know to be true uh, on the medical side of this. yes, so, yes. Yeah. um but i i think part of this is directly related to his worldview he views the world that like you need all these rules in order to prevent chaos well what happens when the rules don't work you have a chaotic world you have chaos in your life and you don't have control over yourself and i think the problem is jordan peterson is deeply afraid uh of even the slightest uh, loss of control uh and that's not a healthy way to think people need to be able to say okay i'm i need help or i'm losing i'm having some trouble here that that there is an element of humanity that requires admission of vulnerability and i think jordan peterson's worldview does not allow that well the competitive authoritarian worldview does not allow that and the self-help worldview like the the field of self-help work that he does in particular does not allow that you have to always be getting better every single day no back steps ever uh and and we see that in jordan peterson's own uh literature if you do back step it's horrible you're a failure you know you've made all of this you need to get your shit together think of how how shameful and embarrassing it is you know so yeah yeah and 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 to kind of, I think like this is this is brought up by Raphael in the comments section. Um, but that that there these people are look the people who are watching Jordan Peterson, listening to him, they're looking for a community to some extent. And and Absolutely. it's not and it's not just like Peterson to be clear. There are left wing communities that are very much like worship the video essays, worship the debate, bro. We see that online all the time. All the um, time. Yeah. And and I think really. I don't want to be the guy that says make them touch grass, but uh-huh. but I do think to some extent getting people to say, hey, if you if you're so sure about these this this uh, group, maybe you want to see them. Like we mentioned earlier, it's really getting people to recognize the humanity of their interlocutors. It people, it's it's very hard to want to like throw away a person if you uh if you don't hate them. They need some element That's of true. hate. To, to justify some of their worldview. And I and also- And that's actually, oh, sorry, sorry, good job. You're good, you're good. I, I, I And this is where I, I look at Jordan Peterson's philosophy of everything being a battle between order and chaos as deeply dangerous because it creates paranoia. It maintains the fear, it maintains the hatred. And, you know, that that is not a good way to look at uh, <coughs> anything. Um, this is one of the reasons I really like reading history works because it requires me to look into like, you know, evidence, facts, claims, historical methods, schools of thought, the nuances between things rather than looking at somebody as inherently evil. Um, yeah, definitely. Except if it's the lost cause, the lost cause is evil. <laughs> well, the lost, the lost cause is perpetuated by people who were bitter that they couldn't own other people so yeah you know there's that uh and, and we think we think it's interesting that you say that you know peterson is all about law versus chaos and everything we're of the belief that that's just public he's he's actually about authoritarianism versus liberty he, he's he 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 likes to say that without law we would all stretch down into you know chaos and so on and so forth and uh, but in actuality, he himself is one of the most public people in his sphere about slapping down laws that would bring order and equity to less serviced communities. So he, despite the fact that right now the GSRM is in complete and total chaos, the GSRM is being regularly persecuted all around the world, people are attacking them literally in the streets. Uh, you know, people are, are having stuff thrown at them. They're being called all sorts of slurs. You cannot tell us that is law and order. That is, for that demographic, complete and total chaos. But he wants that to be. Any law that tries to come out which gives them equal rights legally under the same, you know, jurisdiction as him, he does not want that. So we can't say logically that Peterson cares about law versus chaos. He cares about authoritarianism. He cares about his personal agendas being made into law. And then that's fine because if his personal agendas are in law, then laws aren't bad because they're his. Yes. And, and, so. and to kind of wrap up around that, I wanted to just say like one of the things that uh, people in general need to start uh, doing 
don't think of philosophers or public figures, including myself, as the end all be all that you have to accept or uh, understand. Like I, I don't. There is no Connerism. Uh, do not like use that. I do not want that. But instead, look at these philosophers, these thinkers, these commentators as resources for you to use and learn and grow. And well, you said you said earlier that you know a huge reason why people don't think about Jordan Peterson and why they think he's right is you know he's already a genius. Why should I question what he says? Yes. But that that in in and of itself ties into the anti science, anti reality methodology of competitive authoritarianism, of cult leader mentality, of all of those things in science in the scientific community where where we make our where we try to make our uh, our, our stomping grounds. If you're a genius, that means that there's more reason to pour scrutiny onto your works. It means that there are more eyes on you. It means that you have to be more right or more people will be there to see it. We're a nobody, so we can make all... We're a nobody and we're not known as a genius in the scientific community, so we can make all sorts of weird, spurious, wrong claims and then come back to them later and just kind of erase them from the books and pretend it didn't happen and be right later. But a genius, a, a real member of the, the, the pillar of the scientific community, if you do something wrong, everybody sees it and you have to answer for it. So if Jordan Peterson were being the scientist that he actually was trained and has a PhD in being, he would be being held a lot more accountable. Yeah, and I think to kind of wrap up on that, I, I do think one of the things that is really important for people to remember is that... One moment. Oh, go ahead. I'll just address the other audience. One of the things I think people need to remember is that in academia, your ability to like maintain yourself is open to immense criticism and your reputation is everything. Your ability to uh, deal with certain facts is key. Well, and and if you screw up... As much as it's your credibility. Yes, yes, yeah. your credibility. And one of the reasons I think Jordan Peterson is has abandoned that is because he knows his ideas cannot stand up to public scrutiny or scrutiny in general, so he appeals to a select audience. And that is a dangerous yeah. part. And we see a lot of that with, you know, typical uh, uh, creationist religious propagandists. We see that a lot with... with um, uh, political propagandists and 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 far right and far left extremist groups we, we we see that a lot that's that's a very common tactic so to i wanted to thank you very much for joining me and i would like to remind everybody that uh, i am planning to do more videos like this i really just couldn't get the computer working my camera was a mess um and i didn't want to hide behind a, a blank screen so if you enjoy this video please like and subscribe once it is up uh in the vod version on youtube and you can also look into my newsletter on the Progressive American on Substack. Thank you very much, man. Thanks so much for having us.